Well, obviously disappointing to lose, but, uh, you know, I tipped my hat to Maryland. I thought they were really good tonight. Um, you know, it was the best, not that they've been poor, but I, I thought it was the most determined and best I've seen them defensively all year. I thought, you know, they did a great job, you know, just with their length and athleticism, kind of forcing us out of the things we like to do. Um, and then really, I, I thought we were a little bit jittery in the first half. You know, we had some uncharacteristic turnovers. I thought we got sped up a little bit, and um, it was a great atmosphere. I, I was, I want to thank all the fans who came out tonight. I mean, when when I took this thing over a couple years ago, these were the nights you know that you dream about when you take over a job is, you know, a big time game. You know, Saturday night, great team. You're playing, and the place is packed and cheering for us. And um, so I really appreciate everybody coming out. I wish we could have played a little better, but. I thought a lot of it had to do with Maryland, to be quite frank. You know, sometimes, you know, you when you lose a game, you come in and you talk about all the things you didn't do and what you could have done better. And I can do that. I mean, we certainly have them. But I really thought tonight a lot of it had to do with what Maryland did to us. You know, and, you know, really, if you take out in the first half our turnovers, which led to a lot of fast break points, um, you know, I thought in the second half we played much better. But you can't spot a team a 40 to 20 lead. You just can't. Um, I thought we were much, again, much better in the second half. And, and you guys know, I mean, we have to make shots. I mean, we go two for 20 from three. We're not, we're not going to beat a top five team in the country if we go two for 20 from three. That's just not how we're constructed, especially not without having Alex out there. So we have to make shots. I thought we got some good ones we didn't make, and then I thought they did a good job of defending the three-point line. So I'm open for questions. Were the jitters just because of, you know, number four team, a I think lot so. of fans? And I just think the atmosphere, you know, we, to be quite frank, I'm not trying to, we haven't played in front of this kind of crowds. You know, they just, we just haven't, you know, and that's something we got to get used to. I mean, we're, we're a good team and I hope people are going to come out. They should, they, our guys deserve it. They're a fun team to watch and they should come out. But I just thought the excitement, Maryland team, they knew how good Maryland was. You know, I thought uh, I thought we were just sped up a little bit. We had some careless turnovers early, and again, you you let them get out in the open floor. I mean, you you let Mello and and Rashid get out in the open floor with athletes, and the guys they have. It's going to be really tough to stop them. And really, I I thought our initial defense when we got them stopped in the transition, I actually thought our zone uh, pre presented some some problems. You know, it just the end of clocks and some of the turnout turnout. The turnovers and runouts, I thought, were the things that killed us. After uh, riding so high, you know, with the win streak coming to this, do you wonder or worry about how deflating this could be? Yeah, I hope not. I mean, your guys are disappointed. I mean, it's never fun to lose. Um, but listen, man, they, we gotta we gotta move forward. I mean, it's like I told the guys. I, I mean, I, somebody may prove me wrong. I don't see anybody going eighteen and zero in our league. You know, and the way we see it, you got eighteen opportunities. Um, we had one tonight, and we got beat by a team, a really good team. They beat us. They outplayed us. They deserved to win. You know, we won our first game. Now you got to flush this one. And we got a couple days to get ourselves ready for Ohio State on Wednesday. It's If we allow this game to knock us back for the next game, then, you know, that's part of my job with my staff. But I, I don't think that's how our guys are made up. Uh, you know, I saw guys in the locker room that were disappointed. But we're going to pick ourselves up. We're going we're gonna to get on the practice floor. And like I said on the radio after the game, I think a lot of times when you play really good teams, the thing that's good at times is you get exposed in some of your weaknesses. And I thought they exposed us a little bit, you know, with, with uh, some of the things we got to get better at. And I'm looking forward to watching the film and, um, you know, showing the guys and using this to get better. I mean, this is, uh, this is one game. I said before the game, and I mean it, like it would have been great to beat Maryland, and certainly it would have been an unbelievable feat, but we can't make this game tonight bigger than it is. You know, it was a great opportunity at home to have a chance to play one of the elite teams in college basketball, and we lost the game. Now we got to move forward to our next one, and we'll have another great opportunity on Wednesday to play a really good Ohio State team. Uh, this was Trey's first game this season without an assist. What effect does it have on the rest of the team when he's having trouble creating like that? Yeah, I just... I didn't think Trey, it was a tough night for Trey. Um, I thought Suleiman did a great job on him. You know, I really did. I thought, thought Rashid was hounding him all night long. He forced him into tough shots. Um, 
you know, and, and what happened was, and you guys know this, in the first half, they were really spending so much attention on our shooters that when we drove in there, we had those little floaters. You know, I thought Trey had three or four of them, and that's his shot. And, you know, he had the one in transition where he got stripped and it went off his knee. Like, there were about four or five opportunities to, to loosen the defense a little bit. And because, excuse me, because we didn't take advantage of that when we drove, because they weren't helping as much. And when we got in there, and I thought some of those shots he normally hits, he just didn't make tonight. He makes some of those. Guess what? They got to start helping. And then our three-point game, you know, that's when we start pitching. So I think it was a combination of those two things been so impressive during non-conference play had been the way the ball was moving on offense. Um, did you see after a couple of those early turnovers, do you think the ball started to move slower and you guys start to hesitate when they were swinging it? Yeah, I mean, I'll have to watch it. I mean, I thought we were trying to run our stuff. I really do. I mean, we were moving. We were getting into our pick and roll game. I mean, that's what we've done, you know, on movement. Um, and again, I thought they were really hugging shooters. You know, I'll have to look at it, but I thought we got into the paint and, you know, BMAC was finishing, you know, early, but Trey really wasn't. We got some shots blocked. You know, Sanjay had a layup at the basket that he didn't make. Taphorn had a layup at the basket he didn't make. When we did get fouled, we missed free throws. So, you know, all of a sudden, I think if you make them pay from the inside, then, all, then our drive and kick game gets better. But, you know, certainly it could have moved better. I thought a big fun, I thought it was them, though. You know, I thought their, their defense was really locked in tonight. And I was very impressed with the way they defended us the whole night. More on the three-point shooting, Chris. Just um, a lot of the elite teams in this conference are among the nation's leaders in three-point defense. And yep. Are you content with the sort of living and dying by a three and making sure you can get your shoes open? Or are you, particularly with Alex out, what have you been doing? To try yeah, to I mean, you know, obviously with a guy like Alex out, that's going to take away a little bit. But, you know, we took 20 out of our 60 shots. That's one-third. You know, I mean, if it's more than half and you're shooting like that, then we can start. I'm not, I'm not so sure we lost because, I mean, it would have been nice to make shots, but I'm not sure that was the game story. And the fact of the matter, though, is we have to be who we are. And if Aaron Falzone and Nate Taphorn and McIntosh and Demps and Lindsey and those guys are open, they got to shoot the ball because that's how we're constructed. And, you know, certainly now the emergence of Pardon, I thought he played well again tonight in his third game. I thought he gave us good minutes. I actually thought that was the best Joe he's played. You know, I mean, you look at, obviously he can make, he can make his free throws at a better clip, but I thought his activity, you know, he, I thought he, he was a presence. Um, I thought it was the best he's played since he's been back from his foot injury. So if we can get Alex back, you know, I thought a game like tonight too is a game where you really miss a kid like Law. You know, just a long, lengthy athlete. You know, when you play against these really long, athletic teams, you know, that's where a guy like having a guy, another guy like Vic out there against a layman, you know, against some of their athletes, you know, I think, uh, you know, I think not having those two guys tonight, obviously, you know, would have helped if they would have been out there playing. But to say live or die by the three, I don't know if I'm going to say that, but it's a big part of our game. And it's a big part of a lot of people's game. I mean, Maryland made 11 threes tonight. You know, they shot 31 threes. What if they would have went six for 31? Were they living and dying by the three? I don't know. They took 31 threes, so we took 20. So I'm not sure it's living and dying by the three. It's just we didn't make them tonight. They defended us well, and we got to keep shooting them. The first half and the second half was the pace that you guys tried to install in the second half. Uh, was that a you know was that a conscious decision at halftime to try to push the pace and kind of put the game in the guards' hands? Yeah, no, I mean we we had it in the guards' hands too in the half court, but I thought their half court defense was was bothering us. That's why I felt like my my opinion was if we could get them on a broken floor before their defense got set, we could maybe get some open kick out threes, some drives to the basket. I thought their half court defense was really locked in. So we talked about if we got long rebounds, if we did get a turnover, let's push it and try to attack early before their defense could get set. There's no question we did discuss that. Chris, you hadn't seen too many teams of Maryland's caliber. What does that first half show your team about what it has to do going forward? Well, I mean, it was, I mean we, we faced a team that beat them handily, so we did. We faced a team that beat them by double figures. So they're really good, but, you know, we we've, we've faced teams that are good. And like I said, they're real good. And, and they, they, have a, they have a chance to win the whole thing. I mean, they're that good. And that's why they're ranked in the top five. And... They have all the components. They have great guards. They have size. They have good wing players, and they're tremendous. They're very well coached. And so, when you have those th three things, and they're a veteran team, I mean, they're only playing one freshman, and he's a monster. So, you know, they they have all the components to be great. 
like I said, it's a great, just like when we played North Carolina, you know, we didn't win that game either, but we got better from that game. We got better from that game. And I hope this can be a learning experience for us as well. And um, as we move forward in the league, I mean, you guys know, you just gotta, you gotta play every game as it counts. I mean, let's, let's not overreact on one game, just like we didn't overreact when we beat Nebraska at Nebraska. Like you win a game, you lose a game. You, you get back to the drawing board, you try to put a game plan together for the next team, and you try to do your best to win the next game. Suleiman and Trimble had 14 assists and only one turnover. Is that concerning to you or more just they were exceptional tonight? I thought they were exceptional. And, and really, to be honest, we're not a team that forces a lot of turnovers. You know, that's just not how our, we're made up. We opportunistically, you know, we try to get turnovers, but they were great. I mean, they they were they played like big time guards tonight. I mean I I mean look look at their numbers again. 14 assists, 14 rebounds, 40 points. I mean those two guys were great. Were great tonight. And uh, obviously we would have loved to turn them over a little bit more. But if you look at us, we're not really made up to be a turnover driven team. We have to be a good position defense team. Uh, we have to guard our gaps well. Uh, we have to try to limit people to one shot and then and and then try to rebound. You've referenced uh, Alex a couple of times. Uh, what's the prognosis for him? Yeah, he's still out. I mean, no, no. I mean, it's not like he's going to be at practice on Monday or anything. He's he's still out right now, and um, you know we'll keep reevaluating him. His his injury is more like symptoms based. So I mean, he's not he's not in a position right now. He'll he'll be out on Wednesday, and then after that, we'll reevaluate at the end of the week.